Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hey, friends, family in Christ, thank you for tuning in to another podcast. We really appreciate you guys so very much, especially your prayers as we continue to grow. And it's, it's because, of course, God and you. Um, and people have been giving to the, the show here. Um, we've received a donation from Tony and Michelle from Lake Villa, Illinois, and a handful of other states. But we are officially in our fundraising week or two which we do this now, and I think in November, if I remember right. Um, it may have been early December. So twice a year. What we do is we ask you to come on board and uh, to encourage us by giving a tax-deductible donation if you are financially able to do that. And we're excited to announce an opportunity to expand our reach. Pioneer Network, Beck TV, God's Learning Channel, TV Network. We're able to get on these if we can raise the funds to do so. So if you have not already donated to Worldview Matters, uh, prayerfully consider that. And that's a, if you can give a one-time gift of $200 or a recurring gift of $25 a month. We would also like to send you a signed copy of either my latest book, Assault on the Image of God, or a signed copy of Alex Newman's new book, Indoctrinating Our Children to Death. Also, for first-time donors, we'd like to send you this mug etched with my trademark, Keep Speaking the Truth About Things That Matter. There it is on that side, and Worldview Matters is on the other side. The website, worldviewmatters.tv, worldviewmatters.tv. We're so blessed to have Britt Gillette back with us today. Uh, End Times Bible Prophecy. He covers, I mean, I think any imaginable issue and uh, many things that we need to be aware of. In fact, I just want to mention just some of the things he's talked about recently, and you can subscribe to uh, his Substack, and I'll give you that link in a minute. Um, he talked about the number one sign of the second coming, Netanyahu's warning to the world, seven reasons you should study Bible prophecy, and today we're going to talk about six global events that could rock the world at any moment. Britt Gillette, welcome back to the podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Good to see you, brother. I'm glad you're feeling a little better. Maybe not quite up to 100%, but you sound good, look good. <laughs> so um, I want to mention your sub stack because you've been transferring everything over there and doing a lot of work at brittgillette.substack.com. Brittgillette.substack.com. So before we dive into this, uh, there's a lot of events that you could possibly touch on, dozens and dozens. How do you decide every week when you put out content and say, okay, I'm sure you pray, Lord, what do I address now? How do you decide? How do you, what's that progress or that progression like? Well, it's really just a matter of assessing what, what's, in the, what's in the news. What am I reading? What am I watching? What information am I gathering? How does that filter through the context of what the Bible says? And as you said, prayerfully considering that. And then I just run with where God leads me on that wow. issue. Wow. Well, I know the last show we did, I don't remember what the topic was at this point. I think we talked about the banking crisis or the financial you know, situation in, with FDIC and all that. And that was really popular. So people really like to hear these things and some practical steps that they can take. Um, so you're, you're kind of informing, but you're also warning as well. And obviously, uh, always through the lens of the Bible. So, Britt, let's talk about these global events. We only probably have time for six that could change or rock the world at any moment. And, and so what's coming next? You know, the first thing you talked, which was really surprising, Damascus, the destruction of Damascus. So you're going to have to explain that because maybe some newer members of our audience or younger believers might not understand how Damascus is prophetic. Sure. Well, Isaiah chapter 17 talks about the destruction of Damascus. Damascus is believed to be the longest continuously inhabited city on the planet, over 5,000 years of recorded history. And we haven't seen the type of destruction that's outlined in Isaiah 17 happen before. Mm. Now, there's this is a controversial topic. Some people who are very good Bible scholars believe that that was fulfilled uh, previously through, a, through another war. Uh, 
I believe that it is not. Many other people believe that it is not, that it's a future event. And so how this fits into the timeline of what we see going on in the world today, we see this confrontation between Iran and Israel taking place today. And even though that has somewhat faded from the headlines over the past few weeks, I believe there's a very real chance this could erupt again at any moment. Mm. And Iran has proxy armies located all throughout the Middle East and Yemen, uh, using Hezbollah and Lebanon, uh, Syria, Iraq, and Damascus is a headquarters for terrorists and for members of the Iranian military, as we saw uh, recently with the attack there that killed several Iranian commanders. So there's a very real potential that you could see this conflict escalate. Hezbollah is believed to have over 150,000 rockets that they could fire at Israel. There's an opportunity there for them to maybe overwhelm the air defenses of Israel. And if Israel felt there was an existential threat from that, I believe they would use all the firepower at their disposal to eliminate that. And we very well could see something along the lines of the destruction of Damascus, and we could see that prophecy fulfilled. I don't remember who it was, and I'm paraphrasing this, what you just said about Damascus. I think it was Amir Sarfati um, who quite a while ago, people were asking him, what, what does he keep an eye on? He says, well, the world might be watching Israel. I'm keeping my eye on Damascus. I think he's, he said that. It's very interesting. But before you got into the points in your article, I appreciate the fact that you refer to Matthew 24, 8, when Jesus said a lot of things are going to happen, wars, rumors of wars. He said, but all this is only for the first of the birth pains with more to come. And we're seeing a lot more to come. I mean, you could have talked about earthquakes, terrorist attacks, another global pandemic. You started with Damascus. And um, so we're always starting with Bible prophecy, which is awesome. Um, before we go on to number two, any other points you want to share about Damascus? I think that's fine. Okay. Well, this is very interesting. I'm not as familiar with Hormuz. Is that how you say it? The Strait of Hormuz? Hormuz. Hormuz. Yes. So explain why you d decided to pick this one for uh, one of these events. Well, this fits perfectly in with what we were just talking about, this confrontation between Iran and Israel. So the Strait of Hormuz is the vital choke point to enter and exit the Persian Gulf by water. And so as we've seen in the Red Sea, the Red Sea has been effectively closed to Western shipping since mid-December. In spite of the U.S. Navy and all of its allies, I believe there's 22 countries engaged in something called Operation Prosperity Guardian in order to open that up and to end these Houthi rebel attacks on Western shipping. They have not been successful in doing that. Conventional uh, firepower of the U.S. Navy and all navies is no longer a deterrent against this new age of weapons of drones as munitions that can just be launched in mass. And so if we can see that happen in the Red Sea with the Houthi rebels who are funded by Iran, who are trained by Iran, supplied by Iran, if Iran decided to do the same thing in the Persian Gulf, I have no doubt they would be successful. At the very least, they would lead to a dramatic increase in insurance rates for ships traversing the Persian Gulf. 20% of all the oil consumed in the world travels through the Persian Gulf. So wow. if, for instance, they decided, well, w out of protest uh, against Israel, any nation aligned with Israel can no longer come through here. I mean, that is right on Iran's border. They would be able to do that. Hmm. Many nations would probably join them. It would be similar to the Arab oil embargo we saw 50 years ago following the Yom Kippur War. And we could see a spike in oil prices. If it, if it got completely shut down, those could probably approach $200 a barrel for oil relative to now it's around $80 a barrel. So, and if we saw a huge spike in oil prices to that effect, especially in a small time frame like a day or a week, it would lead to a global financial crash because there are so many different derivatives linked to that price. And really, oil, fossil fuels in general, energy 
is the lifeblood of the global economy. There's a direct correlation between energy used and economic output. And so if you cut off that energy uh, lifeline, then economic output comes to a grinding halt. Wow. This brings up so many other possible questions we don't have time to get into. For example, drilling right here in North America. Um, you know, why are we relying on oil that comes from over there, right? I mean, we can talk about all these different things. Before we go on to number three, do you have any quick thoughts on that, Britt? Yeah, I mean, I think we should be exploring every avenue we can to be as resilient as possible. And what we're what we're seeing now, too, is we're seeing the easy to get oil in the shale oil plays within the United States is becoming harder and harder to reach. It's becoming more expensive to drill new wells. So the last decade, decade and a half of that oil production domestically is going to be dwindling in the very near future. And so this is, this is going to be a problem that crops up in the days ahead. So did you pronounce it Hormuz? Is that right? Yes. The Strait of Hormuz. Now, again, for those of us who are maybe geographically challenged, exactly where is this? And it must not be very big if Iran could actually shut it down. Where exactly so, is that geographically? So you have the Arabian Peninsula and you have... So you have Yemen, Saudi Arabia, with Yemen and Oman, and then you have on the other side of the Persian Gulf is Iran. So that would be the area we're talking about. There's okay. a, a, a narrow area of navigable water to enter that Persian Gulf where you're getting oil from Kuwait, from Saudi Arabia, from Iran, from a number of places. Wow. And again, 20% of the world's oil supply not exportable oil, 20% of all oil consumed in the world travels through that straight wow. right there. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Uh, you know, our guys are so on top of it. You know, Jeff, our video producer, he, he just brought that up as we were talking about it. So thank you, because I'm a visual guy. We should have had this uh, planned before, but thank you that it, we've got it up there. Now we can see, my goodness, no wonder they're able to shut it down. Um, okay, so I, I think, Britt, before we get into the next one, we better take a brief pause because I think we need to spend a little bit more time on cyber attacks on infrastructure because this is huge and this has been a threat for a while. Um, I'm excited to hear what you're going to share about that. So we'll take a brief pause. We're with Britt Gillette. By the way, friends, his YouTube channel, End Times Bible Prophecy with Britt Gillette, ETBP with Brit Gillette. Look him up on YouTube if you're not already, but his main site is Brit Gillette at Substack.com. We'll be right back. Introducing Patriot Mobile, the wireless carrier that stands with you. We are committed to supporting the values that make our nation great. With affordable plans and reliable nationwide coverage, Patriot Mobile is not just a wireless service. It's a call to action for those who believe in the American dream. Because this year is not just any year, it's the most important year since our nation's founding. Choose a wireless carrier that shares your values. Choose Patriot Mobile. Get free activation now with promo code David. We are so thankful for Patriot Mobile, Harbingers Daily. And if you are interested in sponsoring Worldview Matters, send us an email and our producer will get right back to you. Worldview Matters at fpeusa.org. Go to our website. If you miss any of that, contact us from there, worldviewmatters.tv. Britt Gillette is our guest today and he covers so many important topics. And I like how he starts off this next one, number three. On the list, we're going through six global events that could rock the world at any moment. Uh, number three, cyber attacks on infrastructure. And I like how you started off. Despite the warnings, busy people or distracted people, many remain oblivious to the prospect of cyber attacks on vital infrastructure. So, Britt, go ahead and, and share why you're concerned about this. 
Well, really, in the modern age, we've become very reliant on certain systems to provide us with our day-to-day -day needs. And so we aren't as yeah. resilient as our grandparents and great-grandparents were. Good point. So we rely on, you know, local utilities for our water, for our energy. We rely on electronic systems for our banking. There are so many different things that we rely on. When you think about, what was it, three years ago, the Colonial Pipeline had a ransomware attack that shut down uh, that pipeline, which here I, I'm on the East Coast. And I remember that time within a few days, all the gas stations ran out of gasoline and everybody's wow. on social media saying, where can I fill up my tank? I can't get to work. And they were able to resolve that relatively quickly. I can't imagine if that had continued for several weeks, it would have completely crippled the economy. Wow. So that's just one example of how uh, how vulnerable we are in so many ways. And again, think about there, there was an attack in January in Texas on several municipalities where you had a cyber attack from Russia that got into those systems. It didn't shut off the systems, but they were probably in there figuring out what they could do. One of those systems, they, it, it led to water overflowing from a tank and flooding a certain area. So Iran, uh, China, other countries have threatened to do this. So think about if they were able to shut down your local municipal water supply or wow. your power or banking, what that would mean if that lasted more than a day or two, hmm. it could cause severe problems. And imagine that on a, a nationwide basis. So there's attacks that are taking place toward infrastructure now that's sort of something we haven't seen probably since World War II. When we look at the Nord Stream pipeline and how that was blown up, we hear about uh, the Houthi rebels. Had, there were some internet cables cut underneath the Red Sea, and they claim credit for that. So there's attacks on infrastructure taking place, and we're really um, putting ourselves in danger if we just ignore those and aren't making plans on what we would do in the event of. So two things I wanted to ask you. you. You say the World Economic Forum has warned, and then in parentheses, which probably means they're preparing to launch <laughs> a global right. cyber attack on the Internet. So you mentioned that. I want you to talk about that. But the other question I have in the back of my mind, I know uh, Satan's got his minions out there. I know people who would want to do evil and do something like this. They've been out there for a long time. Why haven't we seen more of this um, yet? Why do you think? Well, I think because, you know, like probably like nuclear war, <laughs> there's a price to be paid for mm, doing that. Good point. And individuals may <laughs> want to do those things, but nation states are probably holding them in check mm. uh, in order to prevent the what may likely come back at them as a result of that. Yeah. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. maybe there's somebody has said, well, if all of our systems go down, we're not going to look for who the culprit is. We're just going to attack everybody. I don't know, but mm. we definitely need to be prepared for it. Because again, what if, as we've seen, there were a lot of people saying, what if four years ago and people that ignored them and said, oh, that's, over the top or the grocery stores won't run out of food huh. right won't run out of toilet paper these systems <laughs> they, they work perfectly that's and right. then there were a lot of people that regretted that <laughs> oh man the shipping and and the transportation industry um one thing i wanted to ask you the the wef um why would they say this and how would they know that there's some global cyber <laughs> attack coming right i mean Right. Where would they get this intelligence and with, if they're not involved somehow? Is that a good question? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to you have to wonder if they have a plan for implementing that just as there were there were war games put in place for what if a coronavirus was yeah. unleashed on the world? We had yeah. that type of thing thing yeah. happen prior to 2020. And then, oh, it happened. And as we talked about in the previous video, the FDIC has said, well, these are what, what we would tell people that we're wargaming out this crisis. You and I don't have faith in the banking system. And they said we would do this preferably on a Friday. And if you saw there was a bank that failed two weeks ago, 
And they notified us on a Friday after the close. It was a small bank, a relatively small bank. I think it was Republic First was the name of it. But that's they're they're telegraphing their plans in advance, right? Mm. And one of the reasons they do that is so they can say, well, we told you it was coming, right? What, what are you complaining about? We told you it was coming. Yeah. See, it's very important to be listening to what they're saying. Exactly. But and we, we talked about in that video that they were saying, well, what can we share with the people or that they're not ready? The, the little you know, minions, they're not ready to hear what we can share with them. But that brings us to the next one. Number four in the global events that could rock the world is that banking crisis. So we talked a little bit about this the last time we had you on, Britt. And by the way, guys, you can go to worldviewmatters.tv and you can search for our previous podcast with Britt Gillette. Just go in the upper right side and type in Britt Gillette in the search. But go ahead and share your thoughts on this, uh, on the global banking crisis. Well, it's really just a matter of time before this erupts. So we had last year in 2023, we had this banking crisis emerge. We had the failure of the second, third, and fourth largest banks in U.S. history. We had Credit Suisse on the verge of failure, and their government basically demanded that UBS buy them out and prevent that from happening. That would have caused possibly a global financial crisis. Hmm. So they instituted this program called the Bank Term Funding Program at the time that allowed these troubled banks to borrow billions of dollars from the Federal Reserve. That has co since come to an end as of March 11th. Hmm. We also have the banks sitting on $600 billion in unrealized losses on their bond portfolios as a result of interest rates having gone up. And we have a commercial real estate crisis that threatens to take down the system in the same way that we saw the residential housing crisis during the great financial crisis do everything that it did. We had the CEO of Star Wars Capital was on CNBC saying he expects one to two bank failures per week moving forward as a result of this crisis. And Burt Doman of Doman Capital was recently interviewed and said that he thinks that we're going to enter a period very soon that is akin to the Great Depression. So mm -hmm. we're on the verge of seeing this, this the, the Federal Reserve, the politicians, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if they raise rates, they will crush the banks, they will crush the system, will go into a deep depression. Mm. But if they lower the rates to save the banks, then we get runaway inflation. Because the only way they can save those banks is to just print currency. So we're really in a no-win situation at this point. Mm -hmm. And that's the next number five. Your point is the currency crisis. That could be, in fact, it's already in the works. Just share your thoughts briefly on that so we can get to number six, the good, sure. the, the, the great point that you end with. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So right now, uh, or as of two weeks ago, the Japanese yen hit a 34-year low versus the dollar. So they're really in a, a wow. conundrum of epic proportions. They're, it's believed that there was uh, intervention by their central bank in order to prevent that from running away, having this runaway inflation. But they're in a position where Japan is already in a recession. If they hike rates in order to save their currency, well, then they risk not only plunging the economy into depression, but they also risk blowing up their whole government debt load. Because while we in the United States, we look and say the national debt is out of control, in Japan, it's 264% of GDP, which is more than double what we have in the United States. And if you raise wow. interest rates on that debt, then it, you just had this debt spiral where they have to print currency to pay the debt. And then you have hyperinflation mm -hmm. anyway. So at some wow. point, this is going to blow up. And we're talking about the third, fourth largest economy in the world, depending on who you consult. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal. So guys, uh Britt can only kind of condense what's in this article, what's in this particular topic that he um, expounds on at brittgillette.substack.com. And there's a lot more recent ones uh, he's done as well. But number six, and we can end on a high note because this is our hope. The return of Christ, the rapture of the church, that's your point number six. Thank you, because we've got, we've got to end with something that we can look up because our redemption is drawing near. Go ahead, Britt. 
Right. Well, the, the point is, in spite of all of these things, we should have hope because Jesus is already victorious. Amen. We know that Jesus said birth pains would characterize these times that we live in, meaning these types of global events would happen with greater frequency and intensity as we approach the time of his coming. So we would expect to see these very things. So they should give us hope, not fear, certainly. We're not to fear. We should have concern, certainly. But the rapture of the church is an imminent event. It always has been. But as we see these, the stage being set for the events of the tribulation, which we can clearly see, in my opinion, that tells us that the rapture of the church is even closer because I believe that mm -hmm. takes place before the seven-year tribulation. So if that were to, ha to happen, say, tomorrow, all of these things that we talked about would probably happen very shortly thereafter mm -hmm. because the world is built on this house of cards where any number of dominoes could fall at any moment, cause a chain reaction, cause contagion throughout financial system, through uh, wars that we're on the brink of. And if you had the disappearance of a significant number of people, <laughs> That would probably cause all of those things to take place in short order. So mm. uh, the world, world's a mess, but God is in control. And if you know Jesus, then you can have mm. hope in what appears to the world like hopeless times. The world's a mess, but we have the best message, the gospel, to share with a hopeless or a dying world. And it just reminds us everything is so shakable and changeable and, you know, temporary. But God is the unshakable Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He's the creator. And you write in there, if you're already a Christian, don't fear these things that we're talking about. Be, in, be informed. Try to prepare as best you can. But don't fear the things of this world, especially the coming events of the tribulation and remember jesus reminder in revelation 3 10 that you quote in your article the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world um brit i really appreciate all you do and and just always ending like this too it gives people hope that okay things will happen that are out of our control so much is already out of our control but we can trust in a god who is in complete control right Amen. Yes, we can trust in Jesus. He's got everything taken care of. Yeah, praise God. Always good to have you, and it always goes by way too fast. Um, again, friends, brittgillette.substack.com and uh, ETBP, that End Times Bible Prophecy, over on YouTube with Britt Gillette. Lord willing, we'll do this again in the near future, brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Guys, thanks for sharing the podcast. God bless you, and as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.